There are things about the RV life that you just don't learn until you're living it. Or we can just go ahead and tell you now. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. Well, you can certainly live amazing in the RV life, or you can get surprised about <laughs> things that they just don't tell you. Paul and I have been full-time for two and a half years. There are a lot of things that we learned along the way. There's a few things that are basically on-the-job training, if you will. Exactly. So not only are we going to talk about the surprises of RV life, but we're also going to give you some solutions. Yeah, and the first one is the dual refrigerator, the propane electric refrigerators. One of the big things that you may not realize about them is that there is one temperature control for both the freezer and the refrigerator. If you're in a climate where it's about 70 degrees, not much warmer than that, you're going to be okay. It, it's not going to be an issue. But when you get up into the 80s and into the 90s and higher, if you turn the temperature down enough so that your frozen things stay frozen, what's going to happen is the stuff in your refrigerator is going to freeze. Right. So it's always a balance. And actually, what I found, particularly in the 260RD, is if you got over 80, 85, nothing was cool enough. The fridge was like 45 and 50, and the freezer, everything was soggy. And in normal temperatures, you know, 70 and, you know, more milder temperatures, what we've experienced is that something will freeze. Either the eggs in the fridge will freeze, you know, or to get the eggs at a comfortable enough temperature, then we have sloppy ice cream and, you know, floppy popsicles, yeah. right? Depending on the weather you're in, you're just constantly chasing that thermostat. And the other thing about that is the actual size of a propane fridge. The, the door size may be the same on an electric fridge, but on a propane one, the inside space is much smaller. Yeah, the cooling mechanism takes up some of the usable space that you have in there. So what is the solution? You could add solar and get a, a residential fridge and you'd be fine. But that's expensive and it's inconvenient yeah, yeah. and not practical for a lot of people. So the solution that we are recommending is... Is a portable freezer, refrigerator or freezer. And it's made by Iceco. It's a plug-in freezer that will work on your cigarette lighter or just plug into just a regular household current. And you actually can use it as a fridge as well as a freezer one or the other. So if you need more fridge space, you need uh, space for your beers and sodas, you can just have it as an extra yeah, fridge. Right. How yeah, big we... is this freezer? Well, the one we have is 60 liters. That translates to about 15 and a half gallons. It holds pretty much everything in our freezer. I mean, it is yeah. huge. And it's great. It's not just for camping. You could use it for tailgating parties, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. It's so handy because you never have to buy ice again. Now, if you're out here camping and you're full-time, you probably quite likely could be using a cooler and getting ice every day because your fridge isn't big enough. Mm -hmm. And this solves that problem. Mm -hmm. Well, we should mention we have two ice coats. We have the big one that we use in our camper. And then we have the smaller one that we talked about in another video. We keep it in our truck because we do often camp remotely. And if we go to a grocery store 40 minutes away, it's nice to have a cooler to put our groceries in, in the truck. Well, we have teamed up with Iceco and we have a special discount for you. Just follow our link and, and save on your own Iceco freezer. The next surprise is the RV oven. Um, <laughs> the thing about the oven that we have, the seal around the door is pretty pitiful, so it doesn't, doesn't hold the heat in that well. It also doesn't have a broiler. Yeah, if you're cooking something that's very sensitive, then you're not going to be able to do it. I mean, our best advice is to lower your expectations. Now, if you want to make biscuits, banana bread, things that are forgiving, you'll be fine. But anything that's a complicated, sensitive recipe, what would the solution be? Get a portable convection oven. Mm -hmm. they, or like a, one of those a countertop ovens. I haven't tried any of them, so I'm not going to recommend one. But actually, if you, if you know of a good one, to put it in the comments section. The next surprise is the water heater. Do you know that there are dual fuel hot water heaters where they can run on propane and electric? So if you're doing a lot of camping in campgrounds, you would like to have the electric one to save on propane. But if you buy an older one, often they only run on propane. So you're buying propane. When I had my camper van, it was a propane only water heater. Mm -hmm. I was constantly getting propane. Every few weeks I was having to fill up. 
if you're in a climate where it's freezing outside, it's going to take quite a bit of propane to keep that water hot. So if you're shopping for a camper, we recommend that you do get the dual one that will work on electric or propane. But if you have one, right now, if you have a camper that's propane only, what do you recommend? You could take that one out and put in a dual fuel. The other option is you can get an on-demand heater, which only makes hot water when you're using your hot water. The next surprise is if you're buying a new camper, and it doesn't matter how much you spend on it, maybe you spend 100000 on a new camper, the RV mattress will be bad. I mean, that is really sad to say, but it's true. Most people that buy a brand new camper, they don't even sleep on the mattress that comes with it one night. They just throw it out. Yeah. So if you want to tough it out and you're a Grand Design customer, I'll tell you what I did. I bought my Grand Design 260 RD, toughed it out on the mattress for three weeks, and the mattress cratered. It actually had a big <laughs> body size divot in it. And I called Grand Design and they were great. I sent them a photo of it and they sent me uh, some money to pay for a new mattress. It didn't pay for all of the new mattress, but they gave me a good credit for it. Yeah, when I came along, we obviously had that mattress in the 260. And when we bought the 310 that we're in now, uh, we didn't spend a night on that mattress. We just took it out and left it at the dealer. Mm -hmm. and uh, they were kind of upset. They didn't really want it either. <laughs> so. Well, just be prepared. If you are camper shopping, just add it into your budget to buy a new mattress, and that way you won't be disappointed your first night camping and being like, oh, I can't sleep on that. Now, I've heard that people get by by buying toppers for the, the mattresses that these things come with. And I've heard mixed results. Some people say they work. Some people say don't waste your money. Yeah, the next surprise <laughs> with RVs are the tank sensors. If you're not fam real familiar with RVs, you have holding tanks. You have gray tank for your sink water, and then you have a black tank for your toilet. There are holding tanks down there that, that where the water goes. There are sensors on those tanks that tell you how much room you have left. They're good for about one fill on the black tank and maybe a two or three on the gray tank before they get fouled and they don't work anymore. Now, I've gotten to the point, we have gotten to the point where we don't even look at them anymore. We just know. Right, so what will happen is like a new RVer will be out there and will go ahead and drain the tank, you know, a couple times, you know, be out camping two or three times and then notice that no matter what the level the tank is, it always reads full. They can just empty the tanks, it always reads full. So then they start worrying and they start trying to clean it and throwing ice cubes down there and putting Tide down there and trying to clean it because it's like, I, I don't know, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Yeah. Well, here's something. The longer you camp, the more you know, you just sense. You become the sensor. Mm -hmm. And you know when they're full. You know by how much time has passed. Because the longer you camp, the more aware you become of how much water and and other fluids you use that mm -hmm. go in the tanks mm -hmm. and we don't it's not a stress for us to not have sensors no with the black tank uh, this may sound a little gross but but with a black tank you get a warning it will when you flush the toilet you'll get a small belch um, with the flush it'll sound different yeah it'll sound different but it'll actually it'll it's like an air bubble coming up um, and, and that's it, that's your one day warning, yep. maybe two days, yep. one or two day warning that it's full, getting full, you've got another day or two and then you need to find yep. a dump station. When it, yeah, when you're starting to hear that or see that belch, you need to be thinking about taking it to the dump station. Mm -hmm. Now with gray tanks, you know, what happens is you're washing dishes and all of a sudden the sink will back up or you're taking a shower and the water's not draining. Mm -hmm. That's not a big deal. Yeah, you just, yeah, you just, you know, it's time. Something that uh, I didn't realize when I started this life is that not all campgrounds have sewer hookups. It's uh, the, the one we're in right now, for instance, is, is does not have full hookups anywhere in the park. They do have a dump station, but they do not have full hookups. We should put a link below to our solution for that. Yes, there, there is an easy solution for that. I started doing it about a year ago. Right, so you never have to break camp. So right. we'll put a link to how doing that, but basically Paul pumps it out really easy. Yeah, yeah. I use a macerator pump and a, and a tote, and it just, it just makes it so easy. And so, I mean, I just did it this morning, and, and I spent 
I don't know, 30 minutes. So one thing, if you're really concerned about cleaning your sensors, um, we have heard that Tank Tex RX, we have a video about that product, does clean the gray. We've never put it in the gray. Some people have said it does clean the black, so you could try that. The next surprise is I cannot believe RV manufacturers are still designing campers with booths, like the table with the booths and the table goes down and makes a bed. I've had eight campers and I want to say four or five have had those booths. They're not comfortable. People don't like sitting in them because you're straight up. It's mm -hmm. very uncomfortable. I don't think the bed's very comfortable either. So if you're shopping for a camper, Look and see if you can find one with a king dinette. They're more comfortable to spread out. You know, or a table and chairs. Yeah. Well, if you have a booth, you can always modify it. I had a booth in my uh, trailer, the one I had when I met you, and uh, I modified it. I took it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I replaced it with a, uh, with a Lazy Boy recliner and a small table that I ate my dinners at. Yeah, so, you know, you can modify it, or if it doesn't bother you, you know, that's fine too. Another thing is that there are a lot of, they call them ultralight trailers. They want to make them light enough that you can pull them with a half-ton truck. And to do that, they have to take weight out. And the way you get weight out is you make the walls paper thin. So they, they don't insulate well. They don't stop sound hardly at all. I mean, it sounds like you're outside when you're inside. I had a Sunset Trail trailer and it had the Four Seasons sticker on it. That was a total joke. Don't believe the Four Seasons sticker if it's an ultralight. It's not possible. It's, it's not possible. Well, the 260 RD was an ultralight fifth wheel and it did always sound like a window was open. And the other thing about an ultralight is that they're flimsy. You know, they're, we knew that that would not last. If you're gonna full time, you would not wanna get an ultralight because it's not gonna hold up with, you know, all that use and all that travel because mm -hmm. they're just not made for that. Right. Just keep in mind that, you know, rolling these things down the highway, especially the shape that our roads are in these days, mm. is, it's a rolling earthquake. It's going through an earthquake every time you're moving it. It's only going to take so much of that before it's, things start falling apart. I mean, we've had it with our 310. I mean, we've had pieces, I'm sure you've, if you've watched this channel <laughs> for any length of time, you saw the one about the island collapsing. And the 310 that we're in right now, we're in the Solitude 310 GK. Mm -hmm. It is not an ultralight. No, no, it's it's supposed to be a you know it's one of the more well built uh, rigs. I mean they certainly price it that way. So the solution, if you have an ultralight, is to save up for trading it in, right? If you're yeah. full time. Now yeah. it's a great thing to start out with. You're only camping on weekends. That's totally fine. But just be aware, it's not going to be four season. Right. It's not going to be well right. insulated. Well, I full timed in mine for for a year, and mm -hmm. and it was you know it was sufficient, but. I realized about, I don't know, three months in, I was thinking, yeah, this thing's got to go. Well, that's something else, too. Now, we do see people full-timing in ultralights, and we know that their air conditioning is working harder around the clock. Their mm -hmm. heat is going around the clock because of the poor insulation. Mm -hmm. So you may save money in the beginning, but then you'll end up spending more money as time goes on. So tell us the things that surprised you when you went out in your camper for the first time or, or the first few times. Let us know in the comments. I made you breakfast. Oh, that's so nice, sweetie.